So I'm, uh, I'm often asked, I've been in the car job now all my life, kind of, well, a, a, a long time. And uh, I'm often asked, how did you get in the uh, car job? They, they don't usually ask it like that. It's usually a customer. And what they usually say is, how did you get in the car job? But anyway, the answer is, long story short, I won a game of table tennis. And this is a true story, obviously from my side and how I remember it at the time. But uh, when it was coming time to leave school, up until the point I was actually leaving school or, or nearly there, I always thought I was going to be a professional footballer. I was very good at sports, I was very good at football. And uh, then I went off the, the rails a little bit. I discovered girls and smoking and and drinking and, and stuff like that and uh, kind of went off the went off the rails a bit but my mum and dad um, my sister was going out with a, a guy whose dad owned a garage and I used to go down every weekend and wash the cars and uh, eventually I'd, I'd help out selling and doing test drives and so on and speaking to customers and handing brochures out. I, I loved it, that's, that's what I wanted to do. My mum and dad wanted me to have a proper job. Um, my dad got me a job at his firm. Now, my dad was very, very strict, very hard person to work for, I would say, and I didn't want to work there. So my uncle got me an interview at the local, uh, an engineering firm. As a draftsman, I was very good at technical drawing. Those were the only things I was good at. Football, metalwork, technical drawing. Oh, and physics, I was good at physics and, and French too. But everything else, oh, it was just a waste of time. Um, and my uncle got me an interview as an apprentice draftsman, which, uh, I, I would have probably have accepted. However, when I started there, I, I wasn't even 16 when I started. The day I left school, the next day I started at, the, at this firm. And I was in an office. Now, I'm, I like fresh air. I, I like playing football. I, I, I don't like being tied down to anyone or anything. And I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to get out. The two guys I worked with in the, uh, well, three guys I worked with, two guys that were there all the time, were fairly old. And my job at lunchtime or after lunch, they used to fall asleep. <laughs> they used to fall asleep at dinner time, which <laughs> I've got to be honest, now, now I'm probably their age. It sounds like a really good option. But I used to have to wake them up when I'd had my dinner. And I, I used to go to the workshop and the, the fab shop this engineering place the lads there the young lads they used to play football and cricket at, at lunchtime and uh, that's what I wanted to do anyway there was a there was a, a very very large air of don't mix with a rabble and the rabble were the workshop and the fab shop and the where I was in the drawing office we, we were we, we were a different class, that, that was the idea. But unfortunately, I was more workshop than uh, drawing office. So, the general manager, we, we had a, a table tennis table in the canteen. So instead of playing football and, and cricket, which I wanted to do with the, the other lads, I ended up sticking with the people from the drawing office. and. The general manager was an ex-footballer, very good footballer, uh, <laughs> a sort of a dirty footballer, like a, a Norman Hunter style footballer in his day. But again, a good sportsman, and he was a very good table tennis player. And I, I played him probably every day for about 18 months. And he, he started off absolutely thrashing me, and, and it, that was okay. And then one day, we just got to, uh, I think I, it, it was 2018 to me, one more point to win. And I, I had, I'd be, <laughs> whenever I do anything, I try and do it properly. And it, 
my goal was to beat this guy. That's all I wanted to do. And I've been watching Grandstand at Weekend and uh, Chester Barnes, I think it was, and gosh, somebody, Desmond, whose name escapes me at the moment, both fantastic players, and I, and I kept watching them. And uh, the, the, the top spin that they were applying to the, the table tennis ball. So anyway, I bought my own bat. And uh, this one particular day, I need one more point. The general manager played a shot and he was very, very good, as I say. His shot touched the top of the net and bounced up, set itself up really well for a backhand. And I, I can remember the shot now. And I, I pulled off this cross table, backhand, loads of topspin shot. And although he probably would have had it covered, my shot hit the very edge of the table and, and just bounced off and he missed it. I'd won the, fir uh, the, the first game. And uh, he put the bat down, walked out and slammed the door. And at dinner time, dinner hour wasn't over. We we time for some more games, and we'd plenty uh, we plenty of time. He just put the bat down and walked out. And then I waited for him to come back, thinking he was uh, he'd gone to the toilet. Never came back. When I went back to the drawing office and woke the other lads up, um, he proceeded to give me what is or was an incredibly boring and dirty job photocopiers weren't like they are today you used to have to run them through a machine a piece of paper with the tracing run them through a machine which exposed it and then run them through a bath of uh, developer and then pin them up to dry and it, it took ages and he wanted a hundred copies of this dra big drawing which I found strange. Anyway, it took me all afternoon, and I, I finished about 10 to five, and we used to finish at five o'clock. 10 to five, I went back in the drawing office, and he gave me some more photocopying to do, which he never even looked at me, he just said, I want 100 copies of this. And it, it was a knitting pattern for his wife's, <laughs> his wife's, knitting club and uh, from then on he didn't talk to me he gave me all the dirty jobs there were including they, they put me in the workshop and uh, the first job they gave me in the workshop was on a lathe 4,000 valves had been ordered they, they were ordered to the wrong length and they needed 10 millimetres cutting off each end, which involved setting them up, which took ages, because they were like a T-shape out sideways. Part 10 millimetre off one side, turn it round to the other side, and part 10 millimetre off. So 4,000 valves, 8,000 cuts, which was just mind-numbingly boring. When I eventually finished them, they gave me another 3,000 which again I did. And then they put me outside doing, uh, it was a, a, a floodgate, massive floodgate, which was too big to get in the workshop. So they had to be done outside and it was lashing down. I caught pneumonia. <laughs> I, was, I was off work with pneumonia for about four or five weeks. I went back to work and they gave me the same job outside in the rain again. And uh, I went to the, the workshop foreman and said, look, you know, have you got any protective gear I can wear, any, any waterproofs, whatever? And he said, no. I said, well, I can't do it. And he said, well, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. And uh, I said, well, I'll tell you what, stick your job up your ass," and walked out. That's how I became a car salesman. <laughs> I won a game of ping pong. Thanks for watching.